Hello, my name is David, and welcome for Epic Comic Book Tuesday. I thought about doing this for Epic Comic Book Wednesday, because that's a day where Steve Donahue and Michael K. Vaughn team up and join forces to talk about a comic book collection, um, typically from either Marvel or DC's line of superhero comics, although they do deviate from time to time. And today I'm not going to be talking about one of the mainline comic books. Um, instead, I'm going to be talking about a volume of comics here, a, a graphic novel that captured me so well on Monday that I read the entire thing in the span of about five hours of the, the day. I, I started it right after I finished work. So I decided to spend time with family and all whatnot, and then just binge read after everybody was in bed and, and just really enjoyed it. And so I wanted to take the time to talk about it because it's rare that something just captures you like that and gets a hold of you and just won't let go. And there's just so much that went well with this collection that I wanted to talk about it and share it all with all of you and to maybe get some recommendations for others uh, not, not necessarily similar in what they're talking about, but similar in something that might be really easy to enjoy. And so I'm going to be talking about Northlanders. So this is Volume 1, The Anglo-Saxon Saga by Brian Wood. Um, this contains issues 1 through 16, 18 through 19, and number 41 uh, from the... So this is first of three volumes containing the entire Northlanders saga. And I got this for Christmas from my wife. Who, who picked it up on a whim. This wasn't on my horizon. It wasn't on my radar. Uh, but one of our uh, our local board game store that we go to fairly regularly is uh, a comic in-game store. So they have a good selection of comics and graphic novels. And, and so she saw this, thought of me, picked it up, and I finally started reading it. It was calling to me, and that's Part of the joy that I've found this March already. I wasn't expecting to have finished an eighth thing here seven days into the month. Now we're on day eight with Epic Comic Book Tuesday. Um, but I, I just absolutely fell in love with this. So this, this has got uh, five different art artists in here. So each of the five parts in here, so to speak, uh, has a different artist. So the artists are Dean... Ormston, Daniel Zazels, David Gianfils, Marion Churchland, and Ryan Kelly. And so apparently this is published by DC Comics, even though it says Vertigo right on there. So I imagine that's one of their uh, little sub-brands there. Uh, so spoiler alert, I, I absolutely love this. Um, I, I plan to get the other two volumes at some point in time if I can get my hands on them. But here are... My camera doesn't want to focus, but it's got the five parts here. So part one is Lindisfarne, uh, which has got, I think, two chapters, maybe three, uh, showing the, the early invasion. What I quickly found out going into part two that is that we're, we're going to be following different people for each of these different parts. So part two is the Shield Maidens, taking place in around 868. Then it goes to Sven the Returned in 980, Thor's Daughter in 990, and then it ends with The Cross and the Hammer in 1014. Um, so five different stories, and, and each of them opens up with a, a page like this. It tells you the, the part, who the artist was for it. And I, I knew from that first image right there that I was in for a treat. Talk about a, a brilliant opening, chapter one. And the artwork in here is good on most of them. I mean, you, you can enjoy the artwork and the story it's telling. I mean, these are not lighthearted stories. This, this one has a father and his son, and he's just a complete jerk to his son, his younger son. 
Katz, his younger son, well, his wife, died giving birth to him. And there you can see he sees his mother up above. And uh, you know, he, he follows his mother in worshipping the old gods. Uh, because after his mother's death, his father turned to Christianity. And so, you know, then we, we have the coming of the ships. And it's just, it's a short story that it tells. But it tells a really, really fascinating one. So, let's skip ahead a little bit. And we get to the, the second one, which is the Shield Maidens which has a very different art style. This is probably going to be the most polarizing of the art styles because it is very um, different. It's not nearly as rich and detailed. It's a lot more uh, broad strokes. You don't, don't get nearly as much detail, even when you have some close-ups of, of the faces and everything. But it tells the story of three women, and, and they're shield maidens, so they're Vikings, and they're defending a fort, and... There's some interesting adventures that take place, and they get separated. And, uh, you know, an another relatively short one. And then we come to the, the longest of them being Sven the Returned, which is absolutely fascinating. Uh, where, where he, it's a guy named Sven, and you know, he's coming home to a home that basically outcast him. Uh, and he, he's seeking revenge to gain his inheritance. His, his father has passed, and so his uncle has stolen it uh, and, and is holding it, and, and he wants to come back. And so this is him first encountering his uncle. You can see he's he's been captured and all of that, and the story of revenge that is just told going throughout. I mean, th this is just so much great artwork in here, a great storytelling, a really good pacing. I'm going to try to find, there's a couple panels in here that had just a really good uh, battlefront uh, with the armies up against each other, and it's just wonderful. There you see, I mean, that's just great, great artwork. And obviously, a little time passes for our uh, protagonist that we see here as he goes through and, and they follow after. And it's just, uh, here we go. This two-page spread of just these armies lined up across from each other, going to do battle. And then uh, they're going to go into their shield walls. And you get just a great glimpse of what that's going to look like. Because in, in battles during this time, the shield wall, it, it's brutal, it's bloody, it's horrific. You've got two armies pushing on one another and then just seeing who will give way first. And then the fourth one is Thor's daughter. And this is the shortest of them all in here. It's just one part. Uh, but it follows this young lady and what she undergoes. And, you know... Artwork again is just great. It's very enjoyable. And then we have the last uh, occupied island with the cross and the hammer. So we have, I believe it's Brian, uh, Brian Borg as the character that's being followed after. And, and again, we've got some really good artwork. He's got his daughter with him, and he's just uh, trying to, to protect his daughter and, and to evade capture and to get some revenge and it tells a, a really really fascinating story and uh, you know, this one too has just some really good panels of some good medieval armies lined up do, ready to do battle and just yeah I, I absolutely loved it it's bloody it's gory at times with just the, the realism of what you would expect from medieval battles, but it's got touching scenes also in there, you know, yeah, the father and his daughter and, and whatnot, and I enjoyed all five of the stories in here. 
obviously. I, I couldn't put it down. I, I had a hard time pulling myself away even after that first one, uh, the, the first chapter of the first one. And so I really, really was not expecting this. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to pick it up. I wasn't expecting to read it all in one day uh, in the second, you know, the last portion of a day. I wasn't even expecting to make a comic book video this week to talk about it. But when something just really captures you and runs away with you to where you just absolutely enjoy the experience, you, you I feel like a, as a booktuber, I have no choice but to tell you all about it. If you have any interest at all in medieval history, in uh, Viking culture, in the Anglo-Saxon period where there's the, the turmoil and the fragmentation of the kingdoms and the Vikings raiding in and the Saxons fighting them back and, and all of that conflict. Th this does a, a really, really good depiction of some slices out of that and following different story beats along the way. I, I'm going to be very, very interested to see what volumes two and three have in there to get the complete collection of the Northlanders because I, I absolutely want to be reading them. And I feel bad because earlier today, during my lunch hour, I actually pulled out my second Conan the Barbarian Epic Collection, which is a much, much smaller volume with the, the intention of reading all of this first. And even after being so delighted by the very first issue in here, Coming of Elric! That's right, Elric of Melnibide! And, and really enjoying that first issue in there. I still <laughs> had that Northlanders. I was like, you know what, I'll grab it. I'll, I've got a little bit of time before I have to start making dinner. I'll just, you know, check out the first couple pages of it, see what it's like, and see if I want to start chipping away at it. And it just stole me from there. And had an absolute blast with it. And so that leads me to wanting to ask. My, my background is not in graphic novels by any means. Uh, there are some that I know that I need to pick up uh, and, and give a shot to. The, the foremost of them being Saga, uh, which I, I hear highly regarded in a lot of circles. And that's definitely on my short list. But after the absolute enjoyment of Northlanders and the story it told in here and the, the different stories and the differences in artwork and all of those aspects coming together. Granted, it had a lot going for it, being the, the historical uh, Anglo-Saxon England time period. That it, it was working well in my favor because of that. But I think it even if it hadn't have been that, I think the, the way it told its story and the way it unfolded and how quick and easy it was to read through has me absolutely interested in wanting to check out more things. So apart from North, the rest of Northlanders, apart from Saga, what are some other graphic novels, non-superhero? Um, I'm, I'm getting plenty of those from Michael and Steve and their conversations every Wednesday. I... I don't miss an episode of either of those talking about them. But, but what else should I be looking into, picking up, checking out? Because I've got a couple more uh, graphic novel collections on my shelf, but after that's done, i am got a wide open field to be starting to look into some of these and, and start thinking of putting together some sort of a, a wish list of what I'm going to try to track down uh, in uh, 58 books. I think this is book 42 on my 100 book countdown. Um, and see what else I can be watching for uh, this summer when I hopefully optimistically will have completed the 100 book challenge and will start picking more stuff up for myself. But in the meantime, I, I have no objection to checking out a, a different graphic novel from the library and kind of rotating through and trying some of these out. So uh, let me know. Hit me with any recommendations, as many recommendations as you'd like. Uh, because I just, 
I enjoyed the the form it's conveying the story through the medium of the graphic novel. It works really, really well for this. And uh, it, it was a genuine delight. And I want more of that on my shelf. I understand now completely why there are some people like Michael K. Vaughn who just collect and have enjoyed reading through things like this over the years. And uh, it's fantastic. Uh, nothing against the superheroes, but th this was a different type of t storytelling and, and scratch a different sort of itch than what I had expected out of something like this. And I, I couldn't be more delighted by it. Uh, so I look forward to hearing your suggestions and your recommendations. And, uh, you know, Michael, Steve, if either of you have read anything Northlanders, I would love to hear you talk about it uh, on an upcoming, you know, comic book Wednesday or something. Uh, or, you know, give some recommendations. Uh, I value both of your thoughts on that aspect as well. I think that's it. I'm getting nice and rambly. It's been <laughs> a long day full of lots and lots of uh, graphic novel reading. So I think I'm going to just turn in. Um, and uh, Now that this is ready to upload in the morning, I uh, hope you enjoy your comic book Tuesday, along with it being Poetry Tuesday. Don't miss that either, where there's a delightful poem, uh, relatively short, that you can enjoy. So thank you, BookTube.